Welcome back to the channel. It's been a little while, but uh, today I want to talk about more about the Turo and Uber platform. So I have actually decided to ditch the Uber platform because the Uber platform, uh, what I find is that it's a lower grade vehicle, lower grade client. Uh, with lower grade clients, you're getting a lot more issues. You're getting a lot of short term bookings. Um, a lot of people not respecting, not showing you, not respecting your time, not showing up on time, not bringing cars back on time. And what I find with Turo is it's a better quality car, better quality client, uh, much more appreciative, a lot more long-term hires. I'm seeing more 7, 10, 14, 21-day hires and getting a far better return. And I'm actually enjoying the platform a lot more. So Uber, no more. I'm ditching the Uber platform and focusing purely on Turo. So what that means with Turo is when you have Turo, you need a car that is less than 10 years old and under 200,000 Ks. So... As we know, we've got the number one car, which is the LDV T60. Uh, it's just come back last night from a 10-day hire. Uh, after that hire, I have to obviously clean the car, get ready for tomorrow. It's getting picked up again uh, for another four days. And then uh, once he brings it back after the four days, it's gone for another 14 days after that. Um, so at the moment, it's generating about, on average, the last... Well, this is month two now. So the first month was 860, I think it was. Uh, the second month was 1,000, just shy of 1,300. Um, and this month should be on track about the same. So I'm looking, I'm thinking it's going to generate $1,000 a month, 12K a year. And so then it's just a matter of scale, uh, which is then acquiring more cars. And, uh, and but by doing that, you can then go, you know, if you've got five cars, uh, are you doing 12K a month or 10K, 10K per annum, sorry, not 10K a month. Wish it was 10K a month for, for one car, but it's not. Uh, but if you're doing, uh, say, I don't know, 10K per annum, uh, if you've got 10 cars, you're looking at 100K profitability uh, based on those cars, that performance. Now, one thing I'm going to start looking at is the extras. So car seats, uh, extra add-ons, maybe a fridge for the car if they're working away or traveling, whatever it may be, and trying to generate more upsell, um, the old McDonald's philosophy, you know, which like fries of that. So getting more dollars out of each hire. Um, so there's a few things we need to cover today. One is the LDV, and secondly is the next car I picked up, which is this one here, the Holden Trax. So I've just picked this car up. We'll do a deep dive on that once it's all cleaned up and listed on the platform. Uh, but this one is a 2020 Holden Trax. Um, I actually bought it off one of my customers who was moving interstate. They didn't really have the funds to do a couple of repairs and uh, and have the time to, uh, to go through the process of selling it privately. So I did a quick cash sale and got it done. Um, so we own that car outright. We're gonna put that on the platform as well. And that should be a, another option for us. So we're gonna have the option of the dual cab ute and we're gonna have the option of the small SUV. And then another car that arrives next week, which we'll do another deep dive on, is the Mitsubishi Outlander. Uh, the Outlander is a seven seater. So that car was 30 grand, so a bit more, a bit more expensive. Um, but what that gives us is a seven seater option for people who are traveling that can fly into where we are and wanna go travel up to uh, different locations with their family. It gives them more room, more options. Uh, so it'll give us to a fleet of three. Uh, so we've got the LDV, the Holden Trax, the small SUV, the Outlander, which is the larger SUV, seven-seater. And the only other three, two more things I want to do after that would be a, uh, I want to look at getting a van, so like a Hyundai iLoad, uh, a van that has the options of three seats in the back, so a five-seater with the option to pull those seats out for, say, tradies who are working in the mines as such. And then the next one after that I want to get into would be a 12-seater bus. But we're going to get that later on. As we, uh, as we grow the business. And like with any business, you never wanna to go too hard too early. Focus on the one car, which we already had. Uh, I didn't have to spend any money, I already had the car, I already owned it outright, so there's no cost, there's no fees in that. Um, lucky in my situation, I also have my ute, which I use as a daily driver, my Toyota Hilux. It's just a little bang around, cost me 10 grand. Um, but I haven't, out, I haven't, I didn't just outlay all this money on four or five cars and then try it. I used my, what I had, tried the platform, established myself, make sure it works, and then I'll grow and expand into other cars as the business grows itself. And that's just like any business. You never want to go into business and throw all your money in the, at once and throw it all out front and, um, and grow too early because what you might find is what if it doesn't work and you've grown too fast? You've got all these overheads, all this expenditure, especially if you're borrowing for these cars. It'll uh, get an extra level of stress that you don't need um, and you don't really want to have. So by going slow, start with the one car, grow, build some equity, build a few thousand. Once you get some cash flow going, you can then use that cash flow to build 
and purchase other cars to bring into the fleet. Um, now, obviously, what I've learned is uh, all these cars have a point of resale. You need to exit plan with all these cars. There's gonna be a point where it becomes unprofitable to keep it. So with the LDV, it's at 60,000 Ks now. Um, so I think I'd look to move that at 100,000 Ks. I'll probably roll that, trade it in onto another similar car, maybe it'll have to be newer and less Ks. And the same thing with the tracks is at 50,000 Ks. So I think the same thing, once it gets to 100 or at 90,000 Ks, I'll probably roll those funds into another vehicle, uh, which is newer. And so I'm really not, uh, don't want to be losing money because but essentially if you're, if you're making a thousand a month per car, 12K per year, but you spent 30 on the car and you sell it for 20 in, 10, in one year, you've only made 2,000, not the actual 12,000 because you've lost that at the end when you've actually sold that asset. Um, so you want to be able to buy well, sell well. And uh, like this one here, I've paid a really good price for this asset. Um, so in 12 months time or 18 months time when I go to sell that, I should be able to get a very, very similar price to what I paid for it. And in that time, I'm generating free income essentially uh, by renting it out and then using that income to fund other cars. And that's the way you want to try and work it. So you never want to get fall behind you never want to fall behind on the actual cost of the asset. And when you sell that, lose money on the back end. So there's the, the dirty big Hilux over there. Um, so this car just came back from a trip. Looks like it's done a bit of four wheel drive adventure. It's a bit dirty around. Um, I haven't left it in too bad a condition inside. But it's uh, pretty dirty in the back here. Bit muddy, a bit dirty. So we're going to have to get the, the clean out today. I'll wash the outside, vacuum the inside, clean up around. But um, but these are the pieces that people don't see. Everyone Everyone's happy to list their car on the platform. They want to make money, but they don't actually see that here I am on Sunday morning. I've got to quickly clean this car um, to get it back out tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. I don't have the time to do it tomorrow morning, but I do have time today uh, to get that done. And generally, you don't have a lot of time between uh, hires. I'm trying to, and I've got the asset, I want to get it out working. So if I can get it out working, and have zero downtime, I'm, I want to be able to do that, which means I need to be on top of the game when it comes to cleaning and staying on top of maintaining the vehicles. Now, obviously you can see I own a mechanical workshop. Uh, we do tires and autos. So having that as a function allows me the ability to uh, to use my team and uh, use my trade prices to get better pricing on um, mechanical parts should we need to. And obviously we can do the labor, so there's no labor costs. Uh, because one of the biggest expenses when it comes to having a car rental fleet or a Turo fleet uh, is obviously the maintaining your vehicles. And uh, for me, I can mitigate that cost and essentially make it zero except for parts. Um, and then the raw cost of tires. But I can get that done really cheaply, uh, really effectively, and which makes me think I can grow a pretty decent sized business here. Um, so we're up to one, two, we'll have three cars by this time next week. Uh, then obviously, like I said before, I'm gonna try and use that cash flow to get another two cars maybe. Um, and let's just see where this takes us. Let's not get carried away. Let's just keep reinvesting the profits. You know, I don't need the money to, to live. I have my business and my other businesses generating income to live. Uh, I merely saw this an opportunity to get this asset working that was sitting around. And uh, and now I sense an opportunity to grow a decent sized business here. Let's uh, grab this with both hands and give it a red hot crack. So the rest of the day, I'm gonna get this thing clean and uh, get it ready for the client to pick up tomorrow morning. And um, then tomorrow we're gonna get the tracks registered and uh, get that cleaned. Uh, it needs a few things like window tint needs to be done. Um, get some floor mats and some seat covers potentially because you wanna be able to look after the asset and make sure that, because um, you know people won't take care of these cars the way that you do. So you wanna make sure that you're looking after them so when you, when you go to sell it, it's still worth a lot of money. Um, so we'll do that tomorrow and get the, hopefully get that up by Tuesday. Um, Outlander here, probably Wednesday, Thursday, get that listed by the weekend. Uh, we've got a few people who are looking to hire that um, by next weekend. So we're hoping to get that here up and hired. That should be gone for the month. Someone's looking to take that for a, for a month. Um, so there you go. So, you know, we're ticking over. We're uh, business is doing well. We're hoping to make some cash and uh, let's just see. We'll do some uh, some more in-depth review on the tracks and the Outlander when it comes. And, uh, and yeah, let me know if you want to uh, do some deep dive on the back end financials of the Turo platform. I can show you uh, the money and the expenses and the fees and where it's at. And just to see if this is a worthwhile venture that maybe you could look at if you do have a spare car or a second family car that you wanna do. Take care.